One minute. Mark, listen, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking this is my first hour special and I'm freaking out and I don't deserve it. And you're thinking you're not funny enough and that you're not good looking enough for television. And just, you need to quiet all of those thoughts. You have every right to be here. And it's not just because I'm producing it for you that they let you do it. And yeah, you're just average height and weight and very forgettable looking, but it's not about that, it's about comedy. Tonight's about jokes. Jokes that aren't good enough that you're about to tell. But I don't want you to think about any of that right now. Don't let anything get in the way up here. Cause you are better than everyone says you are. Now you're just gonna go out there and kill it. What are you gonna do? Save your voice. Okay. You're gonna be so good. Oh! I don't regret this. I didn't try to back out. Okay. for coming. Welcome to one of the best nights of your goddamn life, okay? <laughs> welcome. We're gonna have so much fun tonight. I am so proud to welcome to the stage one of my favorite all-time comedians. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Mark Norman! Christ, thanks, thanks for coming, huh? Yes, I, uh, I feel bad, this is such a big event, I'm a little hungover. Uh, isn't that amazing, you know, we still can't prevent a hangover? We have all this medical research. I've tried the water, I've tried the pills, nothing works. We can prevent children. <laughs> right? We can't prevent a hangover, you know? At least some people want kids. I've never woken up like, ooh, I am really hungover, but you know what? I think I want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I got to cut back on the sauce, man. I, uh, I blacked out last week. That's embarrassing. I'm too old for that. I told my roommate, he's like, oh, you blacked out? Ugh. That means you forgot to brush your teeth last night. I was like, wow, that is the least of my worries. <laughs> I'm more concerned with the lipstick I'm wearing. Why sent my mom a dick pic? <laughs> yeah, she was like, ah, oh, family plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh. These hangovers, you know, people always talk about how honest you are when you're drunk. You hear that a lot. Get that guy drunk, he'll tell you anything. I feel like I'm way more honest when I'm hungover. When I'm drunk, I can lie all day. <laughs> all right, cops like, you've been drinking? I'm like, no way. Ah. <laughs> when I'm hungover, that's when I'm honest. My life's in shambles. I have nothing to live for, yeah? <laughs> yeah, your friend's like, you want to get brunch? You're like, eh. <laughs> I've never liked you. <laughs> Everything's a lie when you're drunk, you know? You're like, hey, it's the best night ever. These are my good friends, and she's super hot. <laughs> then you wake up like, ah, oh, it's a waste of time. I spent too much money, and that's a dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm an alcoholic, uh, you know. If I'm going to be addicted to any drug, though, I'm glad it's alcohol, you know? It's just so easy to get, right? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like, I think that's why alcohol is the only drug you pour out for dead friends, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would never do that with, like, cocaine, you know? And you're like, well, we should pour a little... Whoa, whoa, we all love Greg, but that shit's expensive. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. 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 See, I drink a lot, but I still get my, uh, my stuff done, you know? I'm what you call a functioning alcoholic. Any functioning alcoholics here? Yeah, all right, yeah, hey. Yeah. We get a bad rap, huh? Why is that a negative term? We're actually harder working than everyone else, you know? We're doing the same stuff you're doing, drunk. <laughs> Where's our parade? What, Bob showed up to work on time? Screw Bob, I slept here. <laughs> We're tough, we don't bitch. Susie didn't show up because she has the flu. Well, I have disease and I'm keeping it a secret. <laughs> Where's my plaque, huh? Yeah, 
I don't know. Hmm. I was hungover on a flight the other day. That's the worst. Oof. Flight hungover. Oh, God. I hate flying. That's the only part of this job I hate. I like a train. Give me an Amtrak any day. No bag check, no security. It's almost like they've never heard of a terrorist. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. I hate flying. Flying is so high maintenance. Flying's like a high maintenance girl. Like, you want to get inside me? You got here an hour early, take your shoes off, and do a body scan. You're like, Jesus Christ, good Lord. Not a train. A train's like a drunk chick. Like, get a beer. Get in here! <laughs> no security on a train whatsoever. You can walk on a train with three suitcases full of cocaine. Like, hey, see something, say something. Choo-choo! <laughs> this is how sad and desperate trains are. Trains don't ask to see your ticket until the train has left the station, right? <laughs> They've already started moving, and then they ask, how much of a fuck could they really give? <laughs> Tickets, please. I don't have one. Well, you gotta buy one now. I don't have any money. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy Newark. <laughs> All right, yeah. I just hate flying. They've ruined it. It's so nerve-wracking. Every flight's an anxiety attack, you know? Every time I have a flight, I feel like it's my first day of class all over again. I'm eight years old. I'm back at school, you know? You're on that plane, single-file line, book bag on, just trying to find your seat, you know? <laughs> then you finally get to your seat, people pull out snacks and start farting, right? Yeah? <laughs> all right? And the flight attendant, she's terrifying. She's like the teacher, you know? She's kind of hovering. She's nerve wracking You know, she scares you. you know, she walks by, you hide your phone, telling like you're reading. <laughs> yeah. You know, she gives you a little lecture. Hey, seatbelt, seatbelt. You know, then the pilot, he's like the principal. He's up in his office, comes on a loudspeaker, you know, right? You don't really want to meet him, but you know if you do, you're in trouble, right? Yeah, right, right? And you're like, all right, I got to pee. You can't pee now. I'm 32 years old. It's not pee time. Sit down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Good Lord. Now you're pissed. Now you're just waiting it out. Oh, my God. Just like class. How much longer? How much longer? Jesus Christ. You're counting the minutes. Then the plane lands. The bell rings. You grab your stuff. You fight your way through the building. You find your mom. She drives you home. <laughs> ah, ah. Ah, ah, oh, come on. Ah. All right. Hey. Love a train. The only flaw of a train, though, if you fall asleep on a train, they just keep going. You know? <laughs> they don't know where you live, and they don't care. Right? Every time I wake up on a train, I look like a roofie victim. I'm like, where are we? Who is he? I trusted you. <laughs> it's so dramatic. Like, you miss your stop on a bus or a subway, you walk a couple extra blocks. You miss your stop on a train, you get out, and you're like, well, I guess it's my new life. <laughs> All right. I don't know. That's just me, though. I worry about everything. I got really bad anxiety, horrible anxiety, riddled with anxiety. I live in the city. I don't have a car. I just walk around everywhere. Uh, you guys ever do this one? You guys ever leave the house without headphones? Woo. Thoughts are not good. <laughs> my God, this whole time I thought I loved music. Turns out I just hate my brain. <laughs> just being attacked all day long by this insecurity playlist on shuffle. Ah, what are you doing with your life? You drink too much. Gonna die alone? You call that a penis? Ah. <laughs> oh, bad head. My brain is evil. It like attacks me. It's like a bully. Yeah. I'll be at a party, hanging out. Everybody's having a good time, talking. My brain's like, hey, you weirdo. You're being too quiet. <laughs> Everybody's wondering why you're such a quiet weirdo. Come on, get in there, say something, you lunatic. Come on, you freak, jump in, you psycho. Come on, get in there. You finally say something, your brain goes, whew, that's what you picked? Ah, <laughs> shut up, dummy. Damn it. My brain never stops. I can't sleep at night, I'm a horrible sleeper. That's why I hate these bed commercials you see at 4 a.m. Hey, you can't sleep? Well, how comfortable is your mattress? What's your sleep number? How's your firmness? You think lack of comfort's what's keeping me up at night? And that's the problem, really? <laughs> it's this goddamn Japanese game show I got going up here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the worry, the anxiety, the dread. I don't need a mattress designed by NASA. I need a Xanax of some self-esteem, all right? <laughs> Come on, comfort. I can sleep on a gravel road if I had a good childhood. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Brain never stops. That's why I never got these guys like, hey, I'm going to bed. I'm like, what do you mean going to bed? I got to pass out. I can't just go to bed, all right? <laughs> What are you, crazy? You want me to lay alone in a room in the dark in my underwear? That's what screwed me up in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. I don't, I don't think I'm depressed, though. I wouldn't say I'm depressed. Although, the symptoms of depression, binge drinking, hard to get out of bed, avoiding people, those are all the things that make me the most happy. <laughs> They always show these commercials. Some guy's depressed, pops a pill, and now he's skydiving, riding a convertible. Then they show the depressed guys in bed with a bunch of pizza boxes. I'm like, that's living. <laughs> yeah, I'm an awkward guy, very awkward. Can't make eye contact with people. See, that was tough. Yeah. 
I'm working on it. It's too intense, too intimate. I don't know how you people do this, you know? It's like a sign of respect. It looks up in the eye. That blows my mind. It's too much. I can't do it. Every time I look up in the eye, I'm like, well, I guess we're in love now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel too much. I'm a feely guy. Everything makes me uncomfortable. Certain words are hard to say. It makes me feel too weird. I love you. Ah, that's tough, huh? Whew, I can't say that. I can barely say croissant. Oh. <laughs> What a horrible word, so pretentious. Good Lord, I can barely order one. They look amazing. I'm like, I'll take a muffin, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Socially awkward, you know? I know I'm socially awkward because I asked my friend what his biggest fear was. He said, losing his child. He said, uh, what's your biggest fear, Mark? I said, huh. accidentally hitting the FaceTime button on my phone. <laughs> Is there a more terrifying moment in life than that? I can't have people see me. I'm not ready. I got weird stuff going on in my room, you know? Yeah, and I'm eating tuna out of a can. I got half a boner, an old yearbook open. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Too much. Oh, yeah. I'm an introvert. Any introverts here? Hey, all right. You guys rarely speak up. Yeah. <laughs> Not fun being an introvert, you know, you just gotta get out there and fake it. Yeah. Hard around people. Most people like being around people. For us, it's like, it's work, it's tough. Like, this is an introvert's biggest fear right here. You're hanging out with some guy you don't really know. You're like, all right, man, good hanging out. I'm gonna take the train home. This guy goes, oh yeah, what train you taking? <laughs> uh, I was gonna take the number six. Hey, me too. Fuck! <laughs> Damn it. Back on the clock. Tough to be around people. Day jobs. I don't know how you guys do it. Nine to five. Eight hours with this group. Then five o'clock rolls around. Some guy goes, hey, we should all get drinks. What are you nuts? You want to hang out more? We're done. We did it. <laughs> We're outside the walls. Let's go home. <laughs> That's not a happy hour. That's unpaid overtime. <laughs> yeah, we like being alone. We do. You ever got to eat with a guy? He's like, hey, look at that dude sitting by himself. You're like, I know. <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just a weird brain I got. Like, I want you guys to like me, but I'm scared of you. You bum me out, but I need your love. Basically, what I'm saying is if you have a party, I don't want to go, but if you don't invite me, I'll kill myself. <laughs> this is where I'm at up here, yeah. And if you don't get these jokes, just know your life is better than mine. <laughs> and I know what you guys are thinking. Come on, Mark, introvert. I'm talking in front of 400 people right now. Well, it's pretty simple. This is a one-sided conversation that's been pre-written and rehearsed over and over. And if you guys talk, you get thrown out. I can't lose. <laughs> you guys are the real heroes. You guys are the ones just walking in your office break room, just be bopping and scatting off the cuff, no net, you know? You walk in like, hey, Bob, how was your weekend? I'm like, oh, that was good. How'd you know to say that? Holy hell. What, you take an improv class? You're like Miles Davis over here. Holy moly. Wow. Not me. I got to prep everything. Everything's prepped. I see the break room 20 feet away. I'm like, all right, how you doing, Bob? 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 Then I get in there and I panic. I go, uh, Jews! Ah, fuck! Ah, damn it! Yeah. Ah, ah, damn it! Ah, man. I've always been like this, and thank God for humor. Jesus Christ, you can get away with it. I remember one time I was at a friend's house for dinner, and the dad goes, let's all go around the table, say what we're thankful for. And one son was like, well, we're thankful for the food on the table. And one son was like, well, we're thankful for the roof over our head. And they're like, but what are you thankful for, Mark? I was like, well, honestly, I'm thankful I'm not attracted to kids. <laughs> Right? Wouldn't that suck? It'd be a horrible life, you know? And everybody there was like, whoa, what the hell was that? Holy Jesus, good Lord. And I didn't get it. I was like, wait, why are you mad? I'm saying I'm not attracted. Not attracted. Not into them. What's the problem? Then I got pissed. I was like, screw you guys. I'm the only one here clearly not a pedophile. <laughs> I don't know. I think, uh, you know, you can't be yourself all the time. That's the problem. Especially, like, with girls and stuff. That gets ugly. All right, boy, you say what you're thinking with a lady, that'll... Put that right to bed, you know? Uh, yeah, like I remember one time I was on a date with a girl, going pretty well, went back to her place. I take out a condom. She goes, whoa, 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 where'd you get that thing? I was like, well, they were free at the bar. <laughs> she was like, ugh, that's gross. I was like, well, that's where I got you. <laughs> The girl at the bar got the girl. Right? I don't get why that's. I'm still, still not sure why that's offensive. Yeah. 
Always bring your own condom, sir. Don't let the girl provide it. Yeah. One time I was hooking up with a girl. She goes, uh, hey, do you have a condom? I said, I forgot. She goes, I might have one. Starts digging through her stuff. She finds one. Magnum. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. This went from a good time to a challenge. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, let's give it a whirl. Why not? So she ripped it open, she rolled it on, and it fit. It fit. I got to tell you people, that is a man's version of Cinderella right there. <laughs> uh, I was bell of the balls, yes. Uh, felt great. I mean, it fit, but fit like a sweater on an anorexic girl. But it fit, goddammit, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of dating sites out there now. I think guys like the dating sites, because it's tough to approach a woman cold, out of nowhere, especially when you're doing this. Uh -huh. It's tough. It's a tough move. That's why I feel like women should hit on men more. Hit on us, ladies. You can say whatever you want to a guy. I had an older lady approach me once. She goes, ooh, I'm going to kidnap you. I was like, wow, I could never say that to a woman. <laughs> oh. I said that to a lady. She calls the police. I would be curious to know what a woman could say that would offend me. Like, all right, I'm gonna take you home, drug you, take advantage of you, and film it. I'd be like, all right, well, at least let me pay for the Uber. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm just jealous of you gals, you know? You have options, you have the freedom to say no. Like, if a girl goes on a date with a guy and this guy takes out his Nazi memorabilia, she's like, I get the hell out of here. If I go on a date with a girl and she takes out her Nazi memorabilia, I'm like, I gotta bang her and get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a long winter, you gotta stock up, you know? Ah, <laughs> uh, but you ladies are so sexy, you drive me crazy. God, you're so hot, you just wanna squeeze you. You're so sexy with your wacky labia, I love it. Ah. <laughs> this is how sexy girls are. I was at dinner once, this girl leans over during the meal and goes, hey. I'm not wearing any underwear. I was like, oh my God, that's hot. Then I realized, why is that sexy? Has underwear ever been a huge obstacle for a guy? Has any guy ever taken a girl's jeans off, seen panties, and been like, woo, it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> Put a pot of coffee on, I can't crack that code. <laughs> but that's how hot you are, gals. You can tell by article of clothing you're not wearing. I can't even see it missing, I'm already turned on. Yeah? That doesn't work for a guy, I can't pull that off. I lean over during dinner, hey. I'm not wearing any underwear. She's gonna go, uh-oh. What happened? <laughs> Laundry day, diarrhea, need a wet wipe? Talk to me. <laughs> I don't know. It's just tough to date now, you know? We have no patience anymore. We want everything immediately now. We want everything quick. We want Uber, Tinder, Netflix. Everything's so quick now. The only thing we don't want quick is sex. When's that gonna catch up? Yeah. I was with a girl the other night, I finished kind of early. She's like, hey, what's going on here? I was like, well, these are the times we're living in. <laughs> Come on. I don't have the patience for your vagina to be buffering. Let's go. You're an analog girl in a digital world, sister. Pick it up. Yeah. Yeah, everything's different now, you know? Like, uh, one time I sat down with a girl, she goes, just better. She goes, you don't send dick pics, do you? I was like, no, no. She's like, good, dicks are gross. I was like, well, shit, that... That's all I got. <laughs> that was gonna be like my big reveal. <laughs> well, what the hell are you doing here? You don't like dicks. You hear that a lot from girls. Dicks are gross, dicks are gross. It's weird to think something's gross that eventually put inside you. I don't get that thought process. Like, I think coconut's gross. If you see me eating one, you're like, what are you doing? I'm not like, it was charming. <laughs> I I'm not a, I don't know, a real dick pic kind of guy. You know, I don't know if my dick is impressive enough to register well on a phone, you know? My dick's like an indie band. You gotta see it live. <laughs> you gotta be in the room to really understand it. <laughs> but I was in a relationship for like 11 years. Uh, yeah, now I'm out there, scared, alone, flaccid. Right? Yeah. I learn all the, the tricks of the trade again. I learn everything the hard way, you know? It's tough. Yeah, like I learned that uh, girls, they don't like it when the guy says the word sex on a date. It's like saying bomb at the airport. The whole thing shuts down, right? <laughs> Weird, we all like sex, it feels good, but you can't bring it up. The only way to get the thing you want is to pretend like you don't want it. That's weird behavior. What if job interviews were like that? So, Mark, why do you want to work here? Who says I want to work here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hanging out, taking it easy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was on a date once, I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. And I go, hey, you want to make out? This girl goes, ugh, grow up. I was like, okay, anal. <laughs> 
That's older, right? Yeah. Yeah, I learned the hard way, too, that girls like when a guy has a plan ready for the day. He's got something planned out. Which, how did guys get stuck with that chore? <laughs> right? I had a girl ask me out once. We show up, we meet. She's like, hey, what are we doing? I'm like, I don't know, what are we doing? <laughs> She's like, you didn't plan anything? I'm like, no, did you? She's like, no. I'm like, well, then you're just as worthless as me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to figure it out? I believe in equal rights. Can't we work on this together? And she was like, well, it's very manly when a guy plans a date. No, it's not, just convenient for you. <laughs> How's that manly? Chopping wood is manly. Wrestling a bear is manly. There's nothing manly about Googling tapas and bistros. Right? <laughs> Come on, ladies, you got the right to vote in 1920. Let's use that on restaurants, huh? I don't know where to go. What, because I have a dick? I'm Zagat? Help me out. What the hell? <laughs> manly. Come on. I've noticed women only call things manly when they like it about a guy. Oh, he pays for dinner. He protects me. Instead of like, oh, he wants to bang my friends going bald. He's so manly. Ah. <laughs> it's manly, too. Where's the credit for that? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Tough to figure out what to do. One time, me and a girl, we just, we couldn't figure out anything to do. We went people watching. That's a very New York thing, huh? People watching. Shouldn't we call it what it really is? Really just people judging, isn't it? You know? I, I've never been bird watching, being like, ooh, I wonder if that sparrow knows he's gay. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a sparrow, that's a swallow. Yeah. But hey, it's gotta be tough to date as a woman. I can't even imagine what that's like, dating dudes. Oof. God, that's got to be awful. You get murdered, could have a soul patch. Oh, yeah, oh, God, <laughs> crazy, yeah. It's got to be tough. But although women can say stuff men can never say, you know? Yeah, like uh, one time I was eating dinner with a girl. I was telling a story. She cut me off mid-story. She goes, you know what I like in a guy? I like a strong, silent type. <laughs> I was like, what? Could you imagine if a guy said that? What do you look for in a woman? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I like a woman who's tough and shuts the hell up. <laughs> get kicked out of society. I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm screwed up sexually, you know? I caught my parents having sex when I was 8, 21, and today. Uh, yeah. Oh, the idea of your parents having sex is so horrifying, isn't it, you know? That's why I'm surprised parents don't use that as a threat. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be so effective? Like, hey, Timmy, you better clean that room. Me and your mom are going to go at it. How do you want that math test, Billy? I got a D. I'll show you some D. All right, uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough out there. I'm, I'm seeing somebody now, but boy, single life, yeah, that's, that's the real deal, you know? People are so condescending to single people. They go, you're single? Aw. Don't you get lonely? I'm like, well, sure, but how come we always assume loneliness is worse than a relationship? <laughs> I feel like loneliness is a lot easier to manage. It's definitely easy to get out of. You get lonely, call a friend, go to a movie. If you're in a bad relationship, you're like, well, I guess I got a killer. <laughs> or him, or him. <laughs> my ex, she was tough. My ex was like a real big feminist. I'm a feminist, but she was like, annoying. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. She would always say stuff like, men just judge women by their looks. It's all about our looks. What about our achievements? Which is true, men do do that. But ladies, you do it too. We all judge women. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right? Like, one time she got me flirt with another girl, and she was like, what does she look like? That was her first question. I was like, whoa, what about her achievements? <laughs> Come on, she's a human being, goddammit. <laughs> when you're single, though, you miss love. It's nice to have love. It's nice to have someone love you. That's nice. But that's the thing. We all want the love, but nobody wants to do the work. You just want the love part, you know? It's kind of like a dog walker. We all have our dog, but your pace might do the stuff you don't want to do. Pick up the poop, walk it. Wouldn't it be great to have a girlfriend walker? Right. <laughs> Just some guy on the sidewalk with eight girlfriends on a leash, like, all right, tell me about your day. <laughs> yeah. Get mad about a dream you had. Ask me some hypothetical about you gaining weight. <laughs> cry now, cry now. <laughs> then you get your girlfriend back, like, did she cry? Took a while, but she cried. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of women hate that joke, which is how you know it's real. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, I'm being bitter. You know, my last girlfriend dumped me, said I wasn't manly enough for her, not a manly guy. <whistles> that one hurt. I know we're allowed to say stuff like that, you know? Like, like, how come a woman can say something like, yeah, I like a guy who's good with his hands. He can fix stuff around the house. And you're like, all right, cool. But if a guy says, hey, I like a woman who can cook, people go, whoa, whoa, it's not the 50s. 
Well, how come her job for me is okay? My job for her is not okay. Also, who doesn't like somebody who can fix stuff around the house? I'd love to come home. My girlfriend's like, hey, I built a deck. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah, I'll do laundry. <laughs> So I think women are just so smart because you guys made your gender roles offensive. <laughs> yeah, that was very clever. <laughs> well played, ladies, well played, all right? Guys, how great would that be if we get offended? Hey, girlfriend wakes you at 4 a.m. Or glass shattering, somebody break in, you're like, well, it's not the 50s, go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will say this, I'm sick of good looking people. I'm done with you, men and women. You think everything you say is interesting. Yeah, never had it tough, you know? I went on a date with a girl once. She was gorgeous, way out of my league, beautiful woman. But she had nothing to say. She was boring. She had no personality. And I checked out at one point. She goes, look, I can tell you don't like me. You just want to sleep with me. And I was like, well, yeah, but that's your fault. <laughs> and she was like, screw you. I'm more just a pretty face. I'm like, yeah, but that's all you worked on. <laughs> right? Hours on your hair, makeup, outfit. Get a goddamn knock-knock joke together. <laughs> I don't get these good-looking people. They spend 100% of their time on their looks, zero on their personality. You just assume that part's amazing. Why wouldn't you work on that, too? Right? Before a date, everybody goes, how do I look? No one goes, am I annoying? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that more important? You know, like, that's what you got to worry about. Like, I know I'm not a hot guy. Before a date, I'm writing jokes in my hand, limericks, anecdotes. I'm bringing it, baby. I'm tap dancing out there, you know? <laughs> hey. Yeah. Come on. I'm working it. Like if a girl told me, Mark, you're funny, but you're not that hot, I'd be like, I know, that's why I'm funny. <laughs> I gotta fill in the gaps here, you know? But I'm not one of these guys just full of shit, like, hey, looks don't matter, it's all about the inside that counts. Ah, oh, shut up, come on. We all wanna be found attractive, we all wanna be with something we find attractive. I hate people lie about that. I was at a party once, I was like, ah, oh, that Caitlyn Jenner, she's kinda weird looking. Some girl goes, hey, she's beautiful, and I was like, well, you kinda look like her, and she was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, which one is it, you know? Ah. Yeah, ex-girlfriend was Jewish, big old Jew, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did it for a while. Just found out my ex-girlfriend's getting breast implants. That blew my mind. I use the term breast implants. I don't like the term fake breasts. It doesn't make sense to me. Because the breasts are real, it's just the shit inside that's fake. The breasts are still real. It's kind of like the Bible. The book is real, it's just the shit inside that's fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> book is real, it's leather, leather book. Boy, the Bible, what a buzzkill, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they don't like anything fun. They hate gay, they hate trans. That's gonna be great when doing stuff so sexually advanced, not even in the Bible. You know, like, I love having sex with my robot. The guy's like, all right, you're good. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll try it, Jesus Christ. I know some people get mad when you make fun of their religion, you know, which I never got. If you believe it, just believe it. What does it matter what I say? I believe in gravity. If somebody's like, hey, gravity's not real, I'll be like, all right, good luck out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, religion just feels silly. Come on, who needs God? We got Google, we're good. Yeah, and he writes back. It's just really fallen off over the years. You know, like 60 years ago, rock and roll was considered the devil's music. Now there's Christian rock. Well, what the hell happened there? What, if we wait long enough, they just join in? What's next, 20 years from now? Hey, Christian gay porn. <laughs> I can already see the first movie. Come here, son, kneel before me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I don't mean to bash it. I just don't think people really believe. That's my theory. I don't think you really buy it, you know? We were brought up with it, it's tradition. I went to Catholic school, you know, but I don't think people really believe it. You really believe in the devil? It's a red guy with horns, pitchfork waiting for you, you know? He's the most evil thing ever. We're too casual about it. We got food named after him. We got deviled eggs. We got devil's food cake. We have a hockey team called the New Jersey Devils. You would never name a sports team after something actually real and evil. Never have like the Detroit Isis coming at you. We're gonna cut your head off. Ah! Hey, Holocaust Panini. All right, right out of the oven. Whoa. Slavery soft, sir. Yeah. Don't get the swirl. Can't mix the colors. Right. That's actually real and evil. Yeah. This is the most evil thing ever. We're too casual about it. We say stuff like, hey, speak of the devil, here's Greg. We're just comparing Greg to the most evil thing of all time, willy nilly. 
out of the blue. You would never have something real and evil. And never be like, hey, speak of Jared Fogle, here's Greg. Like, what? No, I hate kids. No, no, I hate kids. Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm just jealous of religious people. It must be nice. It must be comforting to really believe something, you know? That must be nice. Yeah, like I, I really tried with religion. I really tried. I prayed. Nothing happened. I talked to God. Nothing happened. Zero results. Zero. How is that acceptable? I feel like we let religion slide because it's free. <laughs> if you had to pay for religion once a month like Netflix, you'd be like, well, this shit isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that agnostic network after this because at least that's free. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, sorry. Just throwing my thoughts at you here, folks. Uh, <laughs> I know, weird. You guys are nice. Some crowds don't take it as well. I uh, got called a douchebag at a show recently. That's a fun word, huh? Douchebag? Yeah, because the insult is more popular than the actual product. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's ever used a douche, never seen one. What is it, like a Ziploc? I have no idea, right? I feel bad for the guy who invented the thing. Some guy in the 1800s, I invented this thing for women's hygiene. We're all like, nice job, man. We're just going to use that to describe dudes and fedoras. <laughs> I did some research on it. The douchebag actually bad for women. It's not good for you. So apparently the guy invented it. Kind of a douche. <laughs> but that's the thing. I'm getting older, you know? I gotta, uh, gotta get it together, you know? Getting older. Getting older's tough. Everything kind of starts falling apart when you get older, you know? About a year ago, I got paranoid about losing my hair. Started taking Propecia. Could not get an erection. You remember, sir. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> This girl I was dating at the time was like, hey, you gotta get off those pills. I'd rather have an erection than hair. Which is nice to hear, but that only makes sense when you're dating somebody. It doesn't work in the beginning. Like, if I was a bald guy that hit on her at a bar, like, hey, gonna buy you a drink? She's like, I'm good. I'm like, ah, I have a boner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hair loss is scary, man. I don't know if women realize how much guys think about that, you know? I was telling my friend, I'm like, I'm worried my hair's gonna thin. My friend goes, I know what you're going through, buddy. I'm going gray. I was like, well, changing color is a lot different than losing something. Okay? <laughs> That'd be like if I said, yeah, I went to the beach the other day, shark attack, I lost my leg. My friend's like, I feel you, man. Tan line. <laughs> right. Yeah. Being an adult, it's tough. You can tell being an adult is hard just by the abbreviations we use, you know? When you're a teenager, it's like, LOL, OMG, BRB. When you're an adult, you're like, shit. I got a DUI. <laughs> Uh, I gotta go down the DMV, the IRS is up my ass, I got a UTI, uh, my IBS is kicking in, I might have an STD, you know. Some kid's like, TMI, you're like, F you. <laughs> yeah, everything kind of changes when you get older, you know. My brother had a kid, that's crazy. Everybody wants to play with the baby, touch the baby, hug the baby. I find babies fascinating, because babies are the only thing that comes out of another person that strangers want to hold. <laughs> You ever think about that? Anything else comes out of a human being, you're like, wow, this dinner party is over. <laughs> <laughs> but a baby, we're all about it. It's weird, we live in such a germophobic culture, you sneeze on a guy, he wants to kill you, but hey, a vagina monster, goochie goochie goo. <laughs> Very interesting. Something to think about, you know? There's some perks to getting older, though. Uh, I think older women are sexy, yeah. Uh, anybody here been through menopause? <laughs> Might be a... Younger crowd. Um, I'm very ignorant when it comes to this stuff. You ladies really keep a lid on this shit, you know? Like, like my aunt's going through menopause right now. She's bummed out. She's depressed. I thought that would be a good time. Menstruation's over. Years of discomfort over. Come on, you graduated, sister. It's time to move that tampon string to the side. <laughs> right? Why isn't that a party? Where's that Facebook invite, huh? Hey, Aunt Marie, stop bleeding every month. All right! Everybody in the pool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry if this is too dark, and I'm just being myself here, folks. Uh, people tell you to be yourself your whole life. That is the worst advice on the planet. Yourself sucks. Every time I've been myself, I've been fired, kicked in the balls, dumped, whatever. Don't ever be yourself. Yourself is gross and naughty. Self is the worst version of you. That's why whenever you walk into an elevator alone, there's no one else in there, you're like, ooh, I'm here by myself. I can be weird. <laughs> yeah. There's no one else in here. Yeah. All right. Then some other guy walks in, you're like, crap, I got a boner. I've been queefing. Ah, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you got to adapt. You got to go back to society, you know? 
And people tend to be yourself at the worst times, too. Hey, you got a hot date tonight, Mark? Just be yourself. All right. <laughs> You're sitting at dinner. Some girl's like, so, Mark, what are you thinking about? I'm like, well, just thinking, you know? You rarely see any female pedophiles, uh, <laughs> which is probably for the best, because they could make their own kids. Just being me. Um, <laughs> the worst times. Hey, you got a job interview? Just be yourself. All right. You're in some office. Some guy's going, so, Mark, what's your worst quality? Well, you know, I, uh, I always start masturbating when I'm already late for something. Huh. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Didn't see that one coming at all. Uh, quite a curveball there. Whew. Well, I gotta ask now, what's your best quality? Pretty fast masturbator. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna need you here at the Build-A-Bear. Thank you, all right, yeah. I like phony, phony's underrated. Phony gets a bad rap, you know? Why is that like an insult? That guy's a real phony. I love phony, phony makes the world go round. Waiters, they don't care about you. They're being phony and it's nice. The phonier they are, the more you tip. Nice hotel, come on in, sir. We're so glad you came. That guy didn't give a rat's ass about you. He's being phony. We pay top dollar for phony. I don't want a stripper who's authentic. I'm yeah. getting a lap dance. I'm like, yeah, you like that? She's like, well, I'm just trying to get my kids back. Go back, go back to phony, go back, go back. Phony, phony, phony. But you know, I'm, I'm trying to do new stuff, trying to mix it up. I uh, went to the Middle East, I performed for the troops, and I gotta tell you, that place sucks. <laughs> I hate to sound like an ugly American, but it is rough over there. Holy hell, very bleak. They're behind the times, to say the least. They hate Jews, they hate gays, they don't let women drive. That one's not bad. I mean, it's rough. <laughs> rough over there, holy moly. I was over there with a friend of mine, an uh, openly gay comedian, very flamboyant guy. We almost got like 10 fist fights just walking around town. It's weird, because the men over there hate gays, but they also hold hands. So it's a weird thing for your brain to compute when you see it, you know? It's like, hey, get out of here, faggots. Come on, Tom. <laughs> I have both of those. Pick a thing. Hey. Yeah, I got real bummed out over there. I was over there too long, man. I uh, got so homesick that one night I Googled the bald eagle. Yeah. <laughs> True story, yeah. Fun fact, in the most common way the bald eagle dies, gets hit by a train. Weird, right? Swoops down to dead carcasses on the train track. It's so full it can't fly away and a train hits it. Yeah. What's more American than that? <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there, huh? You go to a buffet, eat too much, you're like, ah, just fucking kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put all the performers up in this little condo in the middle of the desert. Felt so unsafe, so nervous. I had no lock on my door. All I had was a chain lock. Who feels safe with a chain lock? I hate the chain lock. I don't get the lodge behind a chain lock. Like, yeah, I want to keep criminals out, but I also want to tease them. <laughs> Give them a couple inches, entice them a bit, you know? The chain lock seems more like a prank than a safety feature, you know? Like the bad guys are thinking, hey, I think this guy left his door unlocked. Ah, what a rascal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hate to throw around the F-bomb. Uh, any gay guys here tonight? Hey, all right, yes. Thanks for coming out, literally. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Love a good gay. My, uh, my roommate's gay, that's fun. I like having a gay roommate, he's gay, I'm broke. I feel like poor people and gay people a lot in common, you know? Right, we're both born that way. <laughs> yeah, women just wanna be our friends. And uh, when you finally tell your parents, they're like, yeah, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I went to the gay pride parade uh, a couple weeks ago, still sore. Had a good time, yeah. They had the uh, homophobic guys out there with the big signs, you know? How much do you have to hate a group to make a sign? I've never been a sign in my whole life. Huh? Huh? I feel bad, these people are more prejudiced and I am productive. Huh? And the markers, the poster board, I don't get it, your tactic for fighting gays is arts and crafts? Ironically, the group you hate the most really pizzazz up that poster. Every sign, too, God hates fags, God hates fags. Like, really, that's all you got? God hates fags? That's not threatening. Who's scared of God? <laughs> huh? 
I'd be more scared of a sign that said Bill hates fags. Like, shit, is Bill here? Is that Bill? That Bill? That Bill? That Bill? That Bill? That Bill? Ah, is that Bill? Bill's real. <laughs> One creative guy, he had a sign he was against gays adopting kids. What a weird thing to be against. I like seeing a gay couple with a kid. You see a gay couple with a kid, you know there's no way that kid was an accident. <laughs> no gay couple could ever get that fucked up. Like, holy shit, what happened last night? Did we rob an orphanage? Jesus Christ. <laughs> holy hell. We gotta lay off the mojitos. <laughs> yeah. Give gay couples kids. You know, you shouldn't have kids. Poor people. Why is that allowed? It's a terrible idea, right? My parents are poor, I'm a comedian. Red flag. <laughs> so weird about kids in this country. You can have a baby at 14, you gotta be 25 to run a car. 25 and or a credit card. If you have a kid, all you need is a boner and a commercial break. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Hey man, I'm 24, can I run a car? Nah, you gotta be 25. Yeah, but I have two jobs and three kids. Yeah, but a Kia Sorento, <laughs> that's a big responsibility, all right? <laughs> Touche, Avis. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I just got an email from a gay guy with a crush on me. Gorgeous gay man. Smoking hot. What a bummer I'm not gay. This guy is a 10. All right? <laughs> a hot gay guy with a crush on you. It's kind of like finding a million pesos. <laughs> and now you're like, oh, man, I can't do much about this now, but if I ever cross that line, I'll be set. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We've come a long way with the gays, haven't we? have got like a full 180 with gay people, you know? Now you get as much trouble being homophobic as you could being gay 60 years ago. Now it's like, hey, mom, I'm gay. She's like, good for you. You're like, hey, mom, I'm homophobic. She's like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's all flipped. It makes you wonder, what are the kids going to say now on the playground? Middle school. When I was a kid, gay was the number one insult. What are these kids going to say, you know? It's all different now. Now it's going to be like, <laughs> look at Bill. <laughs> Woo, he runs like an unbelieving same-sex marriage. <laughs> Oh, man, how about Bob? He's never blown a guy. What a pussy. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was gay, you know? I, uh, I got fired from my last job for sexual harassment. I told a woman she had nice legs. They fired me. Which pissed me off, because my gay friends are working away with murder. They're like, hey, Shelly, how are you? Honk, honk, oh. What? Why is that OK? They're like, well, she's not attracted to women. I was like, so what? I'm not attracted to kids. I can't go to a playground. Hey, Timmy, yeah. <laughs> I don't get stuff like that, you know? Like, you're a woman. Wouldn't you rather be complimented by a group that's into you? I don't care if a lesbian compliments me. Nothing against lesbians, but that didn't help me out. You know? you know, if a lesbian's like, hey, Mark, like your haircut. I'm like, I know, you have the same one. <laughs> that doesn't help me at all. Yeah. That's when I was at the gay pride parade, you know? I went with a friend. Known this guy 12 years. I had no idea he was gay. Blew my mind. He decided to come out of the closet at the parade. I had no idea he was gay. And when your friend comes out of the closet, the first thing you think is, holy hell, how many gay jokes have I made around this guy? Right? <laughs> it's been 12 years, you know? It's a lot of jokes. And I had a guy in the crowd get mad. He goes, what, do you make gay jokes? What, do you hate gays? I was like, no, you idiot. I just make fun of who's not around. <laughs> I'm not prejudiced. I'm a coward. <laughs> don't we all do that? When you wear the friend Bill, you make fun of Jeff. With your friend Jeff, you make fun of Bill. I don't hate them. They just weren't there. That's all. <laughs> People love calling you out on that. What, do you make fun of black people? What, are you racist? No, I just didn't see any, right? I, know, I wish I didn't see you. God, brutal. Times we're living in, I feel like we're so quick to call everybody racist, homophobic, misogynist, you know? That word racist, we throw that around willy-nilly. I was at a party once, I was like, that last name, that's Korean, right? Some guy goes, it's Chinese, you're racist. I was like, well, I just got it wrong. I don't hate them. <laughs> we don't do that with other stuff. What are those tulips? They're lilacs, you botanist son of a bitch, all right? <laughs> My eye on you. I love flowers. I have some. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right? You can just say a race now and people get upset. There's no context anymore. I was at a show once telling a story. I was like, yeah, a friend of mine, black guy. Somebody actually yelled out, hey, why does he have to be black? Well, mostly his fucking parents. <laughs> Pretty sure it's hereditary. Yeah. I don't get why we're so sensitive about certain groups and cultures, you know? Like, you can't make generalizations anymore, that's out, you know? But certain groups have different qualities, different traits, that's just how we are, that's the fun part, you know? I made a hacky joke once about Mexicans and landscaping. This guy in the back goes, hey, not all of them. You're generalizing, buddy, not all of them. 
all right, fair enough, but how come they never do that on a positive generalization? Now you go, hey, Mexicans are very resilient people. And everyone goes, hey, not all of them. <laughs> You're generalizing, buddy. You can do it with dogs. No one gets mad about that. You can go, hey, chihuahuas shed less than golden retrievers. Everybody's like, yes, that's true. But if you say Italians punch more women than Asians, everybody's like, ugh. <laughs> like, oh, why are you mad at me? I'm just going off Google. I didn't do it. Yeah, what did I do? Yeah. 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 Seems like the only group you can make fun of now openly in public is children. That's it. You can say whatever the hell you want about kids. You'd be like, oh, I hate kids. Don't bring your kids around. No kids allowed. I've killed a few. Yeah, I hate kids. Yeah. Uh. Say whatever you want about kids. Imagine a show called Jews are the Darndest Things, right? <laughs> that would never fly. It'd be a great show, though, wouldn't it? How you doing, Shlomo? We are chosen. <laughs> a great show. Yeah. I guess you're allowed to make fun of kids because we all were kids at one point. That makes it a little easier. You know, I can't be like, hey, screw you. I was Mexican for 18 years, all right? Yeah. Get out of my hair. And I believe in equality and all that stuff. I just make jokes. What happened to jokes, you know? I believe uh, women should be paid the same as men. I do. I used to work at this office job one day. I, I walked in. This woman was crying her eyes out. She's like, I saw the paychecks. I want to be treated like a man. I was like, well, you want to be paid like a man. You don't be treated like a man. We don't treat each other well. If you were treated like a man, some guy would walk in and see you crying and be like, hey, suck it up, bitch. What are you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rachel's a pussy. Rachel's a pussy. <laughs> treated like a man. What are you even saying? That would be mayhem. Shelly, how are you? Vagina flick. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's what dudes are doing. What are you, nuts? We'd have to get rid of sexual harassment laws, open the door for titty twisters, credit card swipe, hand grenade, Betty. <laughs> Coming at you. <ya. laughs> Come on, ladies. You guys don't want to move furniture and kill spiders? Get out of here, right? And why would you? I don't either. We're very hung up on treating all the groups the same, but the differences are the fun part. We should embrace that, you know? We do that with black people and white people all the time. You hear that a lot. You don't, should always treat black people and white people the same. No, you shouldn't. We should have the same rights. We shouldn't always be treated the same. That would be insensitive. We all have different shit going on. Like, if I see a, a black guy with jewelry on, his hat matches his shoes, I'm like, hey, cool guy. If I see a white guy with jewelry on, his hat matches his shoes, I'm like, hey, he's gay. <laughs> differences, differences. If I'm driving around my white friend and we get pulled over, I'm like, here's my insurance. If I'm driving around my black friend and we get pulled over, I'm like, uh, I'll do the talking. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. Right? If I see a white guy call a black guy the N-word, I'm like, well, it's going to get ugly. If a black guy calls me the N-word, I'm over the goddamn moon. <laughs> what a great feeling. Come on. Yeah. It bums me out. Like we're at a time now where you just mention a race and people get angry. It's like, well, why did your brain go to a bad place? It's never a good place. Like, I was at a show once. I was telling a joke. I was like, yeah, a Jew, a black guy, and a Mexican walk into a bar. This guy goes, hey, hey, hey. I was like, screw you. Look at that diversity. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are hanging out. It's a hell of a bar. <laughs> Beautiful thing. Never the good. Everybody's so offended. Why is everybody so offended? Offended? What is that? Being offended, that's the adult version saying, I'm telling. <laughs> Gotta be very PC now, those PC words. I'm all about progress, but why does adding syllables to a word make it less offensive, you know? Used to be stupid, now it's learned disabled. Used to be retarded, now it's mentally gay or whatever. <laughs> Can't keep up with the PC, you know? It's all just a gesture. None of it means anything. Like, some PC I like, like Native American, that's good. He's not from India, why are we calling him an Indian? Native American, great, I'll say that. But like African American, I feel weird saying. I don't have African American friends, I have black friends. I don't have any Caucasian friends, I have relatives. <laughs> <laughs> None of it adds up. We're all the African Canadians, why don't we say that? Black people born in Canada every day. We don't know what the hell we're saying anymore. But like Idris Elba's an amazing African American actor. Well, he's British. <laughs> what the hell are we doing? <laughs> It's just white people. We're nervous. We don't know what to say. We're scared. We don't want to get fired. We don't want to offend. You could corner a white guy on the sidewalk now with a microphone and a video camera like, what color is Ray Charles? He'd be like, uh, he's blind. <laughs> <laughs> but what's his ethnicity? Piano player. <laughs> but what color's his skin? I got kids, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> We're terrified. It's coming to my home now. I'm watching the Discovery Channel. I'm like, hey, it's a great white shark. Mediocre white. We're not all great. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Bananas, it's out of control. I just don't get it. Why are we so obsessed with skin color? Why is skin the one part of the body you can't judge by color? And they go, hey, yellow teeth. Gross. Redhead. Gross. 
Everything's judged by color. He's a black belt, he's blue collar, he's red state, he's got pink eye, all color. <laughs> Why is skin so important? I think it's because you can't change skin color. You, know? you can change your hair color to trip to CVS. Hey, your girlfriend comes home blonde one day, you're like, hey, look at that. Your girlfriend comes home black, you're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> you can even change genders now, that's cool. Get surgery, take pills. Caitlyn Jenner, what a hero. What was that chick who told me she was black, Rachel Dolezal, who are like, yeah, nice try, bitch. <laughs> Uh, come on. We all want to be black. Get in line, Whitey, right? Can't just go black in your 30s, skip all the hard stuff. Too convenient, right? I can't just step over oppression and be like, all right, I'll take that bigger dick. <laughs> yeah, all right. You got to take the good with the bad, you know? I don't know. I just don't get, how do you hate a whole group? How do you hate a whole group? I don't get that. I hate specifics about people, you know? Like people who drink Rockstar, believe in ghosts, and say, it is what it is. That's what I hate, you yeah? <laughs> But racism is alive and well, man. I was just down in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. You guys ever been there? <laughs> what a shithole. Holy hell. <laughs> they are 30 years behind over there. You ever go to a town so small, they're still racist towards certain white people? You know? They're like, hey, watch out over there. That's where the dirty Irish live. I was like, Jesus Christ. You guys haven't made it to black people yet? <laughs> My God, you're far behind. I live in New York. We're past Arabs. Let's go. <laughs> Pick it up, come on! Yeah. yeah, and I'm from the South too, so I've seen it all. South has a weird reputation. We're known for being racist and hospitable. It's a weird combo, huh? It's like every white guy sitting around in the South going, oh crap, a couple of black guys moved in the neighborhood. I gotta make a pound cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, very risky to make Jokes now, very risky to be raised. Being racist now, very risky. You lose your job, you get ostracized from society, you make headlines. That's why if anyone's ever racist around you now, you know they trust you. It's kind of this weird, bittersweet moment, you know? You're on a smoke break with somebody, he's like, oh man, I can't stand Mexicans. You're like, holy hell, you're full of hate, but I didn't know we were so close. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I feel like racism and smoke are a lot alike, you know? Like in the 50s, everybody did it. Now we know it's bad, we're trying to cut back, but some people just can't quit. <laughs> We should treat racists the way we treat smokers. You now you're at your day job, some guy's about to tell a racist joke, you're like, hey, take that shit outside, huh? <laughs> Just a bunch of guys out in the cold, huh? Oh, goddamn Jews, huh? Oh, oh, oh. If I don't take those racist breaks, I get cranky. <laughs> and I go to restaurants, how you folks doing? You want the racist section or non-racist? Well, we've had a few drinks, better go racist. <laughs> All right, well, it's your funeral. The kitchen is heavily Hispanic. <laughs> I saw a thing on the news the other day about neo-Nazis. Yeah, neo-Nazi, what a crazy concept. Neo-Nazi. Do you really need the neo? You got Nazi in there, I think you're cool. All right, also we can do the math. You're 22, I know you're not like an OG Nazi. <laughs> yeah. All right. Also, you're a hate group. Do you really need a new hip name? Other hate groups don't do that. Hey, we're not the KKK anymore, we're K-cubed. <laughs> Things have changed around here, baby. New sheets, our threat count. But well, that's where we're at now. Everything's tense. Uh, white privilege, that's a term you hear a lot now, white privilege. I was at a grocery store with a friend of mine, black guy. I stole a candy bar. I love to steal. I get a real rush from stealing. Yeah. I love stealing. What do you call that when you like to steal? What's the word for that? Klepto, yes. Well, what's the one where you have sex with dead bodies? <laughs> Necrophilia, yes. I'm that too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I steal the candy bar, I get outside, I'm all proud of myself. My friend goes, ah, oh, white privilege, white privilege. I was like, what? No, this was a robbery. <laughs> if I had gotten caught and gotten away with it, that would be white privilege. This is me being an amazing thief, right? <laughs> and he was like, no, no, it's white privilege because the guy didn't follow you around the store, he followed me around the store. And I was like, well, yeah, that's why I brought you. <laughs> Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Man, this wasn't diversity, this was a diversion. <laughs> but, you know, we gotta keep up with the lingo, PC. Oh, the whole PC thing just feels very phony to me, it feels bullshit. Like, you can tell PC's kind of bullshit because you never use those words in emergency. It's too many syllables, people are hurt, you gotta help them. You don't have time to be progressive. You gotta save some lives. 
Like, if you see a Chinese guy get into a car accident, run over a black guy, you can't be like, oh, my God, officer, come quick. It's been a terrible tragedy. An Asian-American man got into a car accident. Not because they're bad drivers. And uh, <laughs> he ran over an African-American gentleman who's crossed the street slowly. Not because they do that. And uh, <laughs> you got to come quick. The guy's really hurt. He's drowning in a pool of his own blood. Not because they can't swim. <laughs> now the guy's dead. You killed him. Thanks a lot. I'm Mark Gorman. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So easy.